up at the University of Wisconsin and the laboratory, the mycobacteria lab at the Centers for Disease Control, also cultured mycobacteria and paratuberculosis from the blood of Crohn's patients. Blood should be sterile. For me, cause that, that, that's end of discussion. MAP is an invasive organism in Crohn's patients. American Academy of Microbiology came out in last year, so that it's related. Um, quickly, I've got 30 seconds. Okay, can we treat it? Here's a patient who was um, 58 years old when he came to me. He came and said, Doc, I'm dying. He really thought he was dying. He'd been on all the heavy drugs, treatments, immune suppressants. I scoped him. He had horrible Crohn's disease. He weighed 128 pounds. Here it is six months later. There is no inflammation. This is just being on the antibiotics and weaning them off the uh, immune suppressants. You can see the scarring there. And those little polyps there are just the mucosa, uh, the residual mucosa, and those eventually go away. This is five years later. He just sent me an email. He's doing great. Um, now, antibiotics isn't enough. It isn't enough. You stop the antibiotics, they get their Crohn's back again. It may be two, three, four years later, but they get symptoms again. We need something that will bolster the immune system and, not, and certainly not pretend we're doing something by, uh, by suppressing immunity. Are there any questions? I did it. Okay. Okay. Yes? Can you share one more time the current recommended dosage if you do the glucosamine or the myosin? Well, okay. There are, the mainstream doesn't treat for antibiotics uh, with the atypical mycobacterial antibiotic therapy. There are doctors around the world that are doing it. Okay. In Australia, there's Tom Barodi. He was the doctor who came up with the treatment for Helicobacter, thus getting Barry Marshall the Nobel Prize. Okay, he treats with clarithromycin, 500 milligrams twice a day, rifabutin, 450 milligrams a day, and then clofazamine, I believe that's 100 milligrams a day. There's John Herman Taylor over in London who's pushed for the clarithromycin, 500 twice a day, and the rifabutin same doses. Um, there was Ira Shaffron in Florida, I'm not sure how much he's doing now, and then there's me, and then there's, there's, I think there's a few other, and there's patients, I know that there's doctors who call me, but not gastroenterologists so much, uh, other doctors that are saying, listen, this, this, uh, well the patients are the ones that are driving this now, it's not the gastroenterologist. And I want to make a plea to you all, should not be the gastroenterologist who make the call as to whether MAP is a causative agent in Crohn's disease. It needs to be the microbiologist and the infectious disease people who understand the processes much better. There's nothing in our traditional training to become a uh, gastroenterologist that, that gives us sufficient knowledge of immunology or mycobacteria to do that. So we just repeat each other and go with the herd as a collective group. And I'm a gastroenterologist. Okay. Are you okay? We have time for one more quick question, and then we will have time at the end of the session as well for further questions. Any other questions? Is it true that in third world countries there's less Crohn's disease than in, in modern? Less true now than before. Okay. Uh, what we're finding is that and I'll use this word now, Crohn's is an epidemic here in the Western world. In the third world, we're seeing it all over the place. It's not supposed to be in Mexico, except the hospitals in Mexico City is filled with Crohn's patients. It's not supposed to be in India, it's third world, except there's a lot of Crohn's there, as Dr. Singh, you can talk with him. It's not supposed to be in China, only I'm, in, I'm collaborating with the doctor uh, from Hangzhou, who's writing papers and seeing a tenfold increase in the, in the number of patients that are diagnosing with Crohn's. Uh, why that is, I shouldn't surmise, but we've become, a, but I will, we've become a global village. We're shipping, we're shipping cattle around the world. The Chinese have gone to a, uh, are now 
Now, dairy products are part of their diet. As before, it wasn't part of their traditional diet. In India, they are drinking pasteurized milk rather than assuming all milk has TV and boiling it. So things are changing in, um, in our societies. But there's an increase, uh, I mean, there's just an increase. So I don't buy into the fact that it's not into the third world. We're just not looking for it. But that's, that's complex. I'm, I'm right on the border of El Paso. We don't have much Crohn's disease there. Is it primarily because the population has a lot of Native American genes? Or is it because we're getting exposed to a lot of uh, other microbacteria early on and you get partial resistance? And then this relatively non-virulent, non-infectious bacteria that, that really does, isn't designed to go after the human host. We're a host that it's, finds it difficult to cause uh, an infection in. Um, so no, I mean it just that's a changing that, that, that's a changing target there. They also say that it doesn't occur in, or at least the books did when I was doing my my fellowship, doesn't occur in dark-skinned people. Well, I being having been in the army, I saw more African Americans with Crohn's than I saw white people, and it's just so there's a lot of misinformation that's been in the books that has changed that people still repeat. And who's actually doing the work to sort it out? There's very few. Uh, four avenues, uh, possible avenues of contact with, with the map. Uh, one was water, soil, or water, soil, meat, and dairy. Um, what's your gut feel on, on uh, which of those is the more critical? My gut feel. I adhere to the milk theory. I really do. At least, at least the, the food theory. I think it's infected in our food supply. But, you know, prove me wrong. I mean, well, I suppose whether or not it's in the food itself, because all of those atoms could be related to the dairy Yeah. 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 Dr. Chamberlain, you mentioned that you. Crohn's disease was epidemic. What, what is the incidence in the United States and is it going up? I can answer, I, it's going up. It is going up. It is going up in, in uh, not your socks off types of realizations now in the GI IBD community. In the pediatrics are seeing kids now and I think the youngest that contacted me was five years old, the mother didn't used to see that before. So um, what the actual numbers are, I don't believe whatever the numbers are because they're already five years out of date. And that's the issue. And the real issue is, is diagnosing it. Most of the patients with Crohn's don't suddenly get sick. They go, when, when you're diagnosing it, you go, well, if you had some uh, abdominal complaints, they go, yeah, for three, four years. My doctor told me I had irritable bowel syndrome. I've always had a queasy stomach. You know, there's evidence that it's been going on for a while. 